Hello to all physics enthusiasts and fans of physical experiments. This is Andrei Shchednikov, and today's video will indeed be dedicated to the event of the Tacoma Bridge disaster that occurred in 1940 and the physical explanation of the causes of this catastrophe. The suspension bridge over the Tacoma Narrows in Washington, with a central span length of 850 meters, was opened on July 1, 1940, and its disaster occurred on November 7th. A strong wind blew along the Tacoma Narrows, and its speed reached up to 20 meters per second. The bridge deck began to sway and bend quite significantly under the considerable influence of this powerful wind, and this swaying was even captured on film. In this footage, it is visible that the deck is not just swaying, but also experiencing torsional oscillations. And at some point, the cables holding the deck couldn't withstand the stress, and the bridge collapsed. And after watching this footage, many people will indeed say that the bridge undoubtedly collapsed due to the phenomenon of resonance. But think about it. Resonance occurs when the frequency of an external driving force matches the natural frequency of the system's oscillations. By the way, we have a separate video about resonance and we definitely highly recommend you watch it. However, in the case of the bridge, the wind was blowing constantly and steadily at a constant speed and was not pushing the bridge in perfect harmony with its own oscillations. So why did the collapse happen exactly? That's what we're exactly going to figure out right now. And here, the experiment with the humming blade of grass each of you has done comes to our aid. I very carefully stretch a blade of grass in my hands, bring it very gently to my lips, and the blade of grass produces a distinctive and unique noise. But I'm not simply exhaling air at the frequency at which the blade of grass hums. I'm just blowing evenly and steadily. So why does it, in fact, move back and forth, actually generate such a sound, and indeed, what determines the frequency at which these oscillations occur? And to figure this out precisely, we have assembled this setup. Here, a thin metal plate is secured on two rubber bands. And if I strike it with my finger, I can measure the frequency of its natural oscillations. And if you turn on the blower, the plate begins to perform torsional oscillations in the stream of air flowing over it. We recorded these oscillations with a high-speed camera and determined that the natural frequency of the oscillations was 20 Hz, while the frequency of the oscillations in the airstream was 13 Hz, one and a half times lower. And I want to emphasize once again that this is not resonance because the oscillations in the airflow occur at a frequency significantly lower than the natural frequency. And those who initially said it was resonance, well, it's understandable, as textbooks talk about resonance, but not about this phenomenon. Although it is actually called flutter, and of course, everyone has heard this word. But explaining why it happens is not so simple indeed. And we are going to demonstrate it all now. And the first person to propose an explanation for the collapse of the Tacoma Bridge was the American engineer and aerodynamicist Theodore von Karman. Karman had previously been researching Flutter, a popular open source UI software development kit created by Google, and also studying vortex streets, which are repeating patterns of swirling vortices that form behind obstacles when they are flowed around by air or liquid. And by the way, such a vortex street also forms behind a rope or any other cord. If you spin it, vortices such as these indeed form behind it. And this shedding of vortices therefore actually creates the resulting audible sound. And by the way, we have a separate video about the formation of the Karman vortex street, and we recommend you watch it. Karman believed that when the bridge was subjected to strong and persistent winds, a phenomenon known as a vortex street formed behind the bridge, and the vortex shedding frequency matched the bridge's naturally occurring oscillation frequency, causing it to sway. He even asked for a rubber model of the bridge to be made for him at Caltech and used a fan at home to blow air over this model, carefully, extensively, and thoroughly observing how at a certain air speed the bridge 
or more precisely its model, began to sway. However, this explanation is not supported by the calculated data. The bridge deck, 10 meters wide, was reinforced with sidewalls 2 meters 40 centimeters high and looked like this in cross-section. When such a deck is subjected to a side wind, the vortex shedding frequency in the Carmen Vortex Street is proportional to the wind speed and inversely proportional to the height of the side walls H. At a wind speed of approximately 20 meters per second, the vortex shedding frequency is 1.6 hertz, while the bridge oscillated at a frequency of 0.3 hertz, which is five times lower. And yet, von Karman, the only aerodynamicist on the commission investigating the Tacoma Bridge disaster, was fundamentally correct because the collapse of the bridge occurred as a result of the interaction between its structure and the air vortices. However, the vortex formation followed a different pattern in a manner that was quite unexpected and surprising. And to understand how all this happened, we need to have an understanding of self-excited oscillations. Let's consider a system capable of oscillating. To prevent these oscillations from damping out, energy from an external source needs to be supplied to the system, and it must be done in the correct phase. A self-excited oscillatory system is one that controls and manages the energy input from the source through feedback, which opens and closes the energy supply valve in order to maintain stability. In our situation, the oscillating system is the bridge deck, suspended on flexible cables, and specifically, it can undergo torsional oscillations. The energy source is the wind hitting the bridge deck. It remains to understand how the feedback mechanism works here, how the oscillating deck extracts energy from the wind at the right phase and channels it into its oscillations. The proposed scheme for the oscillation buildup looks like this, in an even more detailed way. When the deck tilts noticeably and significantly from an external impact, a vortex forms behind its leading edge. That is, the low pressure area and the resulting pressure difference below and above the leading edge significantly deflect the deck even further from its equilibrium position. Then the vortex is carried slightly in a backward direction, and then at that moment of forces acting on deck changes sign, causing it to return back again to its equilibrium position and overshoot it due to inertia. After that point in time, a vortex forms under leading edge of deck and thus cycle repeats. We can see how the aeroelastic torsional oscillations of the bridge occur in this very detailed and comprehensive excellent simulation. As long as the oscillation amplitude is small, a Karman vortex street indeed forms behind the bridge. But then the oscillations become more intense and their nature changes abruptly, suddenly transitioning into flutter. Feedback is engaged, now the vortex shedding frequency and the bridge's oscillation frequency are synchronized with each other. And the bridge will oscillate in this non-linear mode until the structure can no longer withstand it and it collapses. The Tacoma Bridge over the Tacoma Narrows was rebuilt in 1950, and as you can see, a rather strong truss was constructed underneath it. But in addition, his deck was specifically fitted with these incredibly transparent and highly detailed grids. And now it's time to ask our traditional concluding question. Why do you think these grids were made at this point in time? Please write your thoughts on this matter in the comments section of this YouTube video.